One of the most iconic items in the sewing box is the pin cushion. But how did it come to be and why is it a tomato? Join me in a stitch in time as we do a quick exploration of its history. Ever since the invention of the straight pen, there's been a need to have a place to put them. Not only were straight pens extremely hard to come by back in the day, but they still managed to find their way into bare feet. In olden times, okay, wait, no, no, you're right, that's on me, I should have been more specific. In the 16th century, straight pens went from being stored in pin cases to pin pillows, which was a small pillow filled with cotton, wool, horsehair, or sawdust. Jumping to the Victorian period, collecting things to show off to your friends became the original version of Instagram, but it was in person and you were lucky to get a handful of likes. Fancy pin cushions with pretty pins were a guaranteed crowd pleaser. But why is it a tomato? Rumor has it that tomatoes used to be displayed in the home in order to soak up evil spirits like a ghost trap. Maybe because for the longest time, tomatoes were believed to be poisonous and evil spirits like poison? Thankfully, people were wrong about this and we eventually got pizza. But anyone who's ever tried to keep a tomato on your counter knows that a tomato will go from ripe to overly ripe to gross in a short period of time. So apparently people had no choice but to make their tomatoes from fabric because evil spirits can't tell the difference between a real tomato and a fake one. This of course is just a fun tomato rumor and who knows how much of it is actually true. It is true though that the iconic tomato pincushion did start making an appearance during the Victorian period. Because they like to make and collect knickknacks, their pincushions came in a variety of shapes and sizes, from shoes and dolls to food made from velvet like pears, apples, carrots, eggplants, grapes, and of course, the tomato. I like to think it was the Victorian version of a bowl of wax fruit because it tricked your friends into thinking you could always afford fruits and veggies without worrying that it could go bad. Plus, it was a great way to store your straight pin, so double bonus. We could have just as well ended up with an iconic pin cushion that looked like something else, like a carrot, but we didn't. Some say that a tomato was just easier to mass produce than any of the other options, but I like to think of it more of a popularity thing, like Victoria News Flash, the eggplant pin cushion is out, the new it pin cushion is the tomato, and then it just stuck. Regardless of the real reason, tomato pincushions have been around for a long time and don't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. And they continue to be a great way to store pins and keep them away from our feet. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified of our new releases. Also check out professorpincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 450 sewing tutorials. If you would like to directly support us, you can join our YouTube membership and earn some exclusive perks. Thanks for watching.